any founder you know like the the thought process was get into their do a token dump the token and get off the industry so the first thing i first advise is forget about the token you know like you know like if you are building a product around token and that is the only usp of your project then you know it's going to fail and i still kind of imagine whenever i talk to amos like you know you remember that meetup we did you know and in that time when we were talking about how expensive a bitcoin is at 600 dollars you know like you always talk about all these kind of things i remember like the first time when i used an application it took me at least 3 to 4 days to get used to it all those questions were coming in my head and i was like okay if this is that difficult for me i like how how would my mom use it you know how would anyone use it Welcome to the first episode of Proof of Builders. Today is going to be a very important day for us because with this episode we are going to be live on YouTube. We also have a very exciting guest with us Aniket Jindal who is not just a close friend of mine but also an accomplished web3 builder. During this episode we will dive into some of the fascinating topics like token, how to build the product which is going to be adopted into the web3 space. and also touch base of the communities as well so sit back relax and enjoy the conversation between the two passionate web3 builders so thank you so much for joining in aniket today and um just for everyone's information aniket is the co-founder of the bikeonomy and uh, done a lot of big things into web3 so thank you aniket again hope you are doing great if not then why not No, I'm definitely doing uh, good. Uh, you know, looking at the weather in Dubai. But thanks a lot for having me, Prashant. Uh, really excited to be here, and a great initiative with POB. You know, like I think it's going to be a very informative session for you know upcoming builders and also in general, you know, people who want to get into Web three. So really looking forward to it. So for me, also the same thing. Okay. So when I started my Web three journey, right? Uh, you guys have already seen me nurturing from from day one, like uh, a baby into the Web three. um and one thing which i have learned is like lot of experiences which has not been yet openly shared with lot of builders who are aspiring to become founder or even want to contribute to the web3 are not able to get those exposure so the intent of the pob which is like proof of builders this is what we call it um the intent of the pob is to make that awareness possible and also try to understand and bring the web3 information more closer to the masses so this is what the intent is, intent is and thank you again for like showing us the interest and i know lot of people are going to learn a lot of things today so to get it started there are few things which we are going to do differently in pov okay we are not going to like become a founders founders we are going to be talking like a raw people like who have a great experience building into some product so we will unlearn all of those things and we are just going to dive into directly into knowing about you and then what was your eureka moment when you decided to jump into the web3 and then we will take the questions and everything forward leading that to different stages okay so would love to hear your journey so far like in terms of what was your eureka moment when you said hey you know what just keep aside each and everything i just want to get into the web3 and start building into this space um yeah i think uh, it's kind of a very old journey you know it's been over 6 plus years for me into the space and uh, my entry into the space i call it chinese chinese serendipity it like happened to be the right time the right place I had no plans to get into crypto to be honest you know just being very candid uh then i went to china to do my masters and original plan was that you know go to china study you know like then probably do something get a job or come back you know to my, by the way like i come from a family business background so in intent was never you know in terms of uh leaving that it was more like okay going there and then coming back but when i went to china uh as silly remember like very first month there was a bitcoin meetup uh, that was organized by one of my co-founders now amit like he we organ- were from the same university so he organized a bitcoin meetup and i happened to be there uh, you know it was a small meetup because at that time no one knew what crypto you know like it was just like you know in fact there was no development also happening the only development was maybe like white papers or some you know icos coming up like that's the only thing that was on going back in 16 a small room of you know like few people talking about bitcoin and you know like what it can do in general like financial space and also you know uh, how it can change you know in terms of how we can look at things uh 
it never made any sense to me you know like uh, first time like in nomira like okay this is totally like above my technical expertise not for me xyz uh but something funny happened you know like uh, same i won't say funny but something uh, unfortunate happened uh, the same week there was demonetization in india for the guys you know who, who like worldwide who don't know what demonetization you know like government of india the band like you know 500 and 1000 rupee note and uh, you know and it was totally chaotic you know around the country that was sort of a time for me like when i you know i was like okay exactly same thing you know like i was listening in bitcoin meetup and I, i i like being in india like i never thought like something like this can happen but like things like this were happening in countries like zimbabwe you know and like some of the you know african and third world countries as well uh so you know that then it kind of triggered me and i was like okay you know this is happening in my own country and you know like everyone is our friends you know what impact it can create in you know like life of normal people you know like in fact everyone you know like within the country so the original intent was just to learn more about bitcoin because at that time it was only bitcoin we never used to talk about smart contracts and stuff around that and just to understand what the space is and what the technology is uh and then it's a sort of a rabbit hole right like once you get into it you know there's like things it's like peeling an onion right there's always one thing or the other uh and uh, yeah and it's just been like 6 plus years now you know like into the space and 6 plus year might have just flied like this right <laughs> yeah, like, i don't know like how, how things are i still kind of imagine whenever i talk to him i was like you know you remember that meetup we did you know and in that time when we were talking about how expensive a bitcoin is at 600 dollars you know like you always talk about all these kind of things <laughs> and then and then we have seen 65000 dollars or 68000 dollars <laughs> at the peak right so imagine imagine what the heartbroken uh, thing it might have given to the people who might have attended that particular same session and and might not have bought the bitcoin so <laughs> <laughs> you know what the bitcoin we never had money to buy the bitcoin honestly we were students we were just like learning about it maybe like buy, buying like some pieces of it so <laughs> but in general you know it has sort of given us a lot in terms of building a careers in the space and do something i plan to do at least for the next 10 20 30 years you know i i'd love to like be alongside with you guys and like go for next 20 30 years i i personally imagine like when i I'll, i'll i'll add my value also right into this like um but the one thing which i have like seen after coming to the web3 is like it never it it is like immense like lot of opportunities and ample of places where people can go and play around but one thing which i really loved about your your coming and your eureka moment was around the demonetization i i don't know if if the people sitting into whosoever is going to watch this video in the future if they are sitting into different uh, countries they might not relate it but if you are an indian you might re- might relate it what aniket is trying to uh, tell you and that too you should be at least 2020 born so that you you might have experienced certain yeah. zerk of zerk of it um but that basically says right with, with that saying there is one thing which we always have inspired about the blockchain the crypto as such is um is it really a uh, something which has to be pursued for the next 20 and 30 years or it is not that is always a question which is hanging around into the heads of the people whenever they think about the crypto or, or i i will we'll get into that deeper uh, once we start asking to that direction but before we go to that question there is one more question which i just wanted to ask you as well is like why you started building bikenom like why why did you choose to even go and build bike i I'll, i'll tell my op- honest opinion um is when i see bikenom as such i see what we are building at sphere on it's like it's it's kind of similar but the domain is kind of different but we we both are aiming towards having a mass adoption right where a crypto should not be treated as a crypto as a digital asset for normal janta out there but rather it should be like more Uh, about robustness Just going deeper into the inclusion yeah, yeah. Totally so that. would love to hear yours would love to hear your hear, hear your from from your mouth itself uh, like why bikenomy and where exactly it is heading to it yeah i mean uh, so i think uh, i told told about you know how i entered the space and the first year for me was i, I by the way worked for binance you know and it was like very small exchange back in 17 so i was an intern there and then kind of joined full time for like couple of months so the first phase of my journey was all about trading coins and all this kind of stuff because there was no active development happening in the space you know there was no alternative l1s you know ethereum was just about icos 
or white paper so like that was the you know like usual day to day activity uh, i moved to india in 2018 and you know uh, all i used to see in crypto was like you know icos and white papers and all this kind of stuff and there was always you know a, a in general like you know discussion around how dapps can change the world you know like how you know all these projects will have decentralized applications how ethereum will have decentralized app- applications and you know uh, the role of defi how it can i'm mean, like at that point of time we never used to call it defi you know it was just like normal applications on ethereum so uh, i always had the curiosity of you know uh, using these applications you know like and be like one of the early adopters uh, i remember like the first application i don't remember the name but i i remember like the first time when i used an application it took me at least 3 to 4 days to get used to it like firstly like had to download metamask you know learn about private keys managing it storing it and then when i used the application it was so difficult for me to actually use it of course ux was bad application was also probably like it's non existent right now uh, the first onboarding to engagement experience was really terrible and that to like for a guy who's who's been into crypto right who knows about all these things for me also it was like really bad like it was like okay why 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 did i choose that when we have like a easy option in web2 world you know like why why do we need that so all those questions were coming in my head and i was like okay if this is that difficult for me uh, like how how would my mom use it you know how would anyone use it uh, and uh, then like we kind of you know like uh, brainstorm a lot in general how applications should become simplified you know we we talked talk, talked a lot to sandeep as well you know from polygon you know how at that time he was just starting with matic you know like uh, we had just inception like baby idea of biconomy but matic was sort of already in development and and he talked a lot about you know how gas fee should should be like you know lower down or in fact like should be removed and how you know like uh, things should become more scalable uh, we went back and we went back you know like to understand web2 as well that how first version of youtube or like facebook were you know how first social media websites were or how like yahoo was back then you know like uh, streaming a video uh, was was like a miracle like people never thought we will be streaming or we will do these kind of things you know just because infrastructure was not there you know it was so super difficult and people were trying to build everything in house no one would actually imagine that you know we can order a book online like i thought all these things were like you know just just dreams uh, so like okay you know like we definitely believe in crypto we we you know like uh, we married to the idea of it but in, in not in this current form you know like if we have to be in the space we have to make sure that people are able to use all these applications and yeah that was the starting point of biconomy you know like the first point was you know how do we make sure that we we are able to use it and if we are able to use it how do we make sure that every any anyone else can use it uh, so from last year we've been kind of focusing just on that like how do we make sure that blockchain applications become easier to use you know and how we can hide away all the complexities you know for any end user we're still not there you know still it's difficult but still i'll say it's a lot better from where we started right so it's a long journey we we kind of iterating our ideas on a way we're learning from you know different user behaviors we're learning from different developers and uh, ultimately we want to make sure that people don't even categorize you know these applications as dapps or you know web3 application it should be like a normal day to day application with blockchain and everything should be hidden in the in the in the background you know and users not knowing about it so yeah that was sort of a starting point uh, you know for for by economy and uh, and but, yeah what what we were doing till, till now but personally speaking like so the idea of uh, like that is what i like i, I don't come from uh i political background but i always hear few few words in the politics is like inclusion um mm. and when we say inclusion i believe the inclusion word is something which has been spoken so far but has not been done and that is where i believe like you guys have been like uh, are trying to make that happen so that it get more included in most of the places and goes deeper to the root so i'm i'm kind of a solution architect so i start visualizing everything as a binary tree so at the tree if you start designing a tree at the bottom of the tree there is there are yeah. people at the root level right so and we have to basically consider them as well before we design anything i believe that is one of the best thing which you guys have been doing and and kudos and more power to you guys again keep doing that but we are not going to talk only about bicronomy we are we we had one more question which we just parked before asking that question the question was around crypto as a scam okay and i i have been <laughs> <laughs> so being being into the web3 right uh, and that too from india it's like 
I don't know. Like I, you are from India. I believe you might able to relate what I'm trying to tell here. But is crypto going to be a scam, or it's going to be something which is going to change or revolutionize the world the way we see today? What is your take on this? I think I'll, I have a very strong opinion on that, and I think everyone knows it that we are in for it. And uh, like I think calling it a scam is maybe like lack of knowledge and you know lack of awareness about this. Uh, of course, like the initial phase of it had been like a lot of uh, misconducts and also you know like sort of uh, 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 projects that probably shouldn't have been there in the first place and ha- happened because of every wrong intention. You know, this was true in every technology. We call it not only in crypto, we call it, you know, web to AI, all these things. Initial phase is always hard, you know, and in, in India, you know, I'm, I'm sure like, you know, everyone has heard or, or experienced where people might might be in for like some wrong practices or very, very short, short term intention that, okay, come here, have like quick money, maybe like sell tokens, do whatever, you know, like stuff that we have seen in both of the Wall Street, something like that. You know, and 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 get get rid of this. So that mindset, I think, is changing now. And uh, you know, uh, what you guys are doing, and in general, is spreading awareness about you know the positives of crypto and what it can revolutionize. You know, in terms of how we are looking at financial applications. You know, how we are looking at ownership. You know, how we are looking at uh, inclusion. You know, like uh, uh, for everyone. You know, like. Uh, that that thing is very powerful, and you know I'm I'm strongly bullish on that. Uh, in the current form, you know, uh, it's not not there yet. But uh, every technology, you know, uh, takes time, and I think crypto should take its time as well. The way I kind of think about it is like 2017, 18 was, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, hopes or you know a lot of uh, talking about you know what this technology can do, but there was no actual implementation. Uh, and that point, you know, like a lot of people were calling it a scam or they were like, okay, this is something that's been talked about, but we haven't seen anything ha- ha- happen. What, you know, 2020, 21 did, uh, you know, like with DeFi and NFTs, you know, and in, in fact, like some part of social as well, was just to sh- show people sort of an alpha version of what this technology can actually do. So we came to a point in 2021 end or 2022 starting that, okay, this technology actually works, you know. That you know we have applications, we have some users. Those users are crypto savvy users, people using it. But of course, you know this this is not the actual form. You know this is sort of an alpha form of what this this app application or this technology can actually do. Now let's make it better. So like 2022, I think the entire year was more towards how we can make this thing more accessible and fix the bugs and fix the applications that were only maybe like meant for very short term and how we can actually make it use accessible to the public. So it's a, it's a very long journey and uh, I think we're just getting started with it. I totally agree. I believe uh, there is one more point which I just wanted to also add on top of it. Is, uh, it is like um, the people who might be calling it as a, it as a scam, uh, I always tell them is like you might have not seen uh, the, the market earlier in 1990s or 1980s or 1960s or 1970s. Um, so if you have been there, then most likely you might not be calling it as a scam because all the technological innovations happens to be a scam in the first place. And then suddenly they, they change the entire industry. And for me, again, um, it's, it's the same revolution, right? Where exactly the, the crypto is going to be playing a very vital role. And as you have pointed it very correctly, like DeFi is, is one of the place and a lot more, which is getting also been included into uh, the growth of the crypto as such. Coming to our next question, which is which is the follow-on on this, is like, okay, so we agree on it's not a scam, right? It's it's something which is going to change the world and revolutionize the way we see today the business has been performed, right? Either in current form or either in converted form. If we move forward, right, do you really see the legal regulations and legal framework can come into the picture and safeguard certain part of it? If yes then don't you think it also hampers the terms called decentralization? If it is hampering the terms called decentralization, then what should, how exactly we should look at and what, and, and, or, or in my world, like I wear my lenses, so I, I always tell is like, at which lens we should look at? Is like, is it the right lens or it is a wrong lens? If it is, it is both, 
and how exactly we can come to a conclusion which one is better and which is which one is not yeah i mean i think uh, uh, as we were just following on what we were you know discussing earlier regarding scams and stuff i think any government you know like definitely want to prevent stuff like this happening in in, in the in the country on the geography and this was kind of getting out of control you know few years ago and that's why a lot of countries have taken very strict regulations in terms of not promoting crypto or or maybe like you know rethinking about how they should be like you know uh, taxing it or or having like legal regulations around it so uh, any government uh, you know don't want stuff like money laundering you know or like trafficking or, or terrorism or something like that that you know uh, to happen at a faster scale like using crypto for example uh but at the same time like no one wants you know like the country to lag behind in the in the, in the innovation curve you know or in the technological curve especially like a country like india where like you know we have you know the i think uh, one third population in terms of you know getting into engineers and you know like developers it's it's like crazy in terms of how you know the tech environment is in, is, is is in india um so the optimal route is you know how we can have a mix of both you know how we can have decentralization at the same time you know uh you know people pay proper taxes you know there's no money laundering there's stuff on that and and for it to happen you know uh it's going to take time you know it's something you know i don't think so the sort of the understanding of how people should be taxing public blockchains or whether it should be taxed or not or how we should be taxing personal wealth uh in crypto as as is is a difficult problem to solve a uh, lot of countries like dubai have taken like uh, sorry a lot of countries like uae have taken like great steps in terms of you know promoting crypto and also like you know like welcoming developers from different part of the world um it's a small country of course you know things move at a much you know pacer like much much faster pace but country like india i think it's going to take some time and we should in fact like work together with the government to make it happen you know uh if we keep on you know like having short term mindedness in terms of creating projects and you know uh, having like false practices i think this can never be achieved so basically uh, what let me just summarize your entire thing is like in, in few words is like legalization is good because it helps not only the law of the land to govern multiple things and make the economies run but also it also helps us to push back terrorism and such kind of malicious activity which can happen at the scale if you go in the same direction because as we always say and and do the things in crypto is like crypto is boundaryless which means like it in it in reality it enables the globalization in the true sense right so this is what i have learned over the time right so if you if you see the world as it is and with the with the angle with the lenses of mine i see crypto like having a boundaryless uh, system but that boundaryless can be exploited very heavily if 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 not been taken it care has been uh, with, with the right tools and we just want to make sure that you know it, it it doesn't increase its space you know yeah and that is where we all have to just stand together right in terms of helping governments to tackle all such kind of incident because nobody see i and you can be good together right there are tons and millions and billions of people who will be like exposed to the crypto and we never want this technology to go down just because of these kind of reasons and i am like full support in terms of like wearable and and we all have to just work closely with the government to make sure like they understand what the technology real revolution is kind of looking like and how we can mitigate that issues so thank you so much for being honest because most of the times you find people talking to and then what they what they call themselves is like pure maxi of a decentralization where they don't want their wealth to be taxed and they don't want to like give the taxes to the government wherever they are living and that is fine if you don't want go to the countries which has a a uh, tax free zone or whatever zone you can go and live there it's fine but if you are living in a country where you have to get taxed make sure you follow their criteria as you follow and help the government to basically remove all of those things like from the from the ground up so coming to the next question which most of the builders around the world like right, they look into when they look at web3 sometimes they miss out the core part of the web3 which is which is around which i personally call as the inclusion of the economy as well in a true sense when i say that that basically means like for me specifically we am an infra guy right uh, we have been building the infra product for a very long time when we see infra as such we see data centers getting created in each and every house and every house is making money either no matter if they are like holding the data in it or not they might be holding somebody else's data to generate the money out of it right 
what is your thought around that kind of uh, economical inclusion which crypto is bringing uh, onto the plate and do you think a growth uh, taking place into that, that, that direction if so what do you think is is the next cycle of the crypto is going to look like in terms of the building the product into the space yeah i think one of the you know uh, i'll say the thing that kind of stands out uh, in web3 is is the community you know like in terms of how uh, you know everyone can be part of something big without them actually working full time on this like i can easily say that you know i'm you know, like working for ethereum without me like you know having like a corporate uh, card or saying that okay i get like a pay slip from ethereum like that never happens i can easily like you know open source development you know and, and probably get like some incentives out of the rewards that uh, I, i do like i built for ethereum so that inclusion uh, you know as you mentioned is, is is something that stands out in crypto and we have already seen with projects like you know ethereum for polygon etc how big the developer community can be and how you know people all across the world you know whether like they're running data centers whether they're running nodes whether they're running anything or, or in fact like just writing an article you know can be part of that community without you know getting like 10 approvals so without giving 10 interviews you know uh, that is something you know the power of community and that is something i, I believe like every project in building in crypto should actually uh, you know work towards because this differentiates from web this never happens in web 2 right like this thing kind of never happens in web 2 this thing is sort of a uh, you know i'll say like a sort of a gift of crypto only like how people uh, across different part of the world you know uh, work together for one common goal and uh, you know and they kind of share responsibilities for that so uh, already seen like you know how communities have been built and you know how new ways of communities are building and this will grow you know like this this is you know like the vibe and culture of crypto and that's why like a lot of people prefer to to you know like leave their like corporate job and get into crypto uh, coming to the next cycle of crypto i mean i'm i think i'm i'm personally biased on uh, you know how ux should be because that's something i'm working on i kind of think about it all the time you know uh, we will see like a lot of applications you know but not in the previous versions of it like you know the first version of ave curve etc was cool but it was very difficult for anyone to use it like even crypto savvy use it how we can have like a user friendly single click ave how we can have a single click curve how we can have a single click you know social application where people can use something like twitter you know in a decent less way i'm i'm actually like more bullish in terms of you know application side of things and ux stuff will play like a very important part of it uh you know what we have been doing with account abstraction is actually very helpful in terms of making sure that you know we we remove all this small small complexities you know like gas like you know uh you know like doing multiple transactions to do like one transaction multiple approvals to you know like just get getting on board to an application so these sort of you know uh, you know ux infra projects will, will definitely become a key and we will be seeing like a ton of like applications where people will be just using it without you know having like 20 steps or or like having like a great learning curve to to get on board to an application so these are the things that that you know keeps me awake all night yeah and one more thing is like whoever is going to listen this talk in the last uh, the crypto part the cycle and everything don't start buying <laughs> the token please it's a it's it's just a, our thoughts which we are putting it forward it's up to you it's it's you who have to decide you have to go and buy any such kind of a token or you want to participate or not it's up to you we are not here to promote anyone it's just a thought process again just to reiterate to make sure like we are not uh, like promoting any such kind of a, a philosophical thing which people just start adopting it into their own uh, buying process um so coming to the next and i believe we will have only two final questions okay together to solve um i have been seeing like multiple founders into the web3 who who every cycle they come and the next cycle they will be out and it has been very a common trend and which also involves one of the topic which we have covered is like the scam part and then rug pull part and there are a lot of thing which happens into the space um what is the advice you want to give to the coming found upcoming founders into the space um is what are the few or if you have to just point out only two what are the two things which you want to give them 
to make sure like they stay in this particular cycle, not only for one, but for two, right? They should be able to go and, and move forward. So what are the things they should be caring about? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a very uh, important and actually a bit funny question because, you know, uh, we have all met those kind of people, you know, who probably like doing crypto and now I'm doing AI, you know, like in the middle, they were also selling masks, you know, you know, or, or like they again, like come to crypto. I think that happens mostly in every industry, but in crypto, you know, the, the general mindset of anyone, or I don't know it is right now, but back then, you know, a lot of people were in here for just getting rich quickly. You know, like that was the mindset that you come to crypto, you will make like a lot of money. Uh, the and, and any founder, you know, like the the thought process was get into there, do a token, dump the token, and get off the industry. You know, like that that's used to be like a typical mindset. A lot of people and, and founders also get into the industry just to do a token. So the first thing I first advise is forget about the token. You know, like you know, like if you are building a product around token and that is the only USP of your project, then you know it's gonna fail. You know. Um, when we started by economy, we never thought of doing a token. Honestly, like the first year was that probably like, you know, build a product, solve a problem, get adoption and see like if token makes sense or not. Like it was just how the feedback we were getting from the community and from the projects that we need to like decentralize our network and to, to make it happen. Like, of course, like token has to come into play. Uh, that makes the process easier. But like, had we started with token, launching a token, and then kind of running away, that shouldn't be the approach. And that is how like a lot of people have been approaching this. So that that is the first thing, like get the token out of the system, uh, at least in terms of, you know, formulating up, you know, like a product and also getting the right PMO. Um, second is like, you know, I would also say like emphasize a lot on community, like because I think Web3 is all about community. And if you're not like a good community manager, uh, you know, probably, you know, you won't get into the culture and uh, ethos of Web3. So that becomes very important. And, uh, uh, you know, like solid take comes with, you know, like some patience. So you won't change the world in like a year or two. So just be ready to, you know, like have a lot of uh, hardships during the journey and, and just be patient because like a lot of, a lot of, I think it happens for everyone. Like we want to, ship something very quickly, half, half baked, half broken, you know, like, but this is, this is not how it thinks are done. Like Ethereum, uh, Ethereum 2.0 was ready, like since I think 2020, it was just like last year it went live, you know? So, so all these things, you know, you should sort of keep in mind, like while actually building a product. And, uh, again, I'll again say that, you know, token should come secondary and should be very product focused. Awesome. I believe, uh, Many people, like, I'll not uh, get into much more deeper, but a lot of people who try to get into the bits, like, I have, for me, I don't know, it's like third cycle or fourth cycle, if I have to, like, if I'm not wrong. So I, my intent has always been is, like, is to go and push as forward as, like, it. the intent of the founders should never be, like, make a money and just go out. See, if you have a skill set, you can always go ahead and do that. You You don't even need to become a founder to do it, even... Even in, you can become an employee somewhere and then and do the same shit, right? So you, you won't, you don't even have to become a founder. So if you are joining in, make sure you join with a mindset like this is no more a uh, fancy place where you just join in and people will just go and start throwing money onto you. It's like that. It's, it's no more like that. So if you are serious, most likely this cycle is going to treat you different. And, uh, and that is where the, the crypto is kind of changing. Now, my f- last and the final question with you is, Aniket, is around if, uh, let's say, it, it is not always about the founders, right? It is also about the team so far, like who has been building these things around. And we never talk about those teams always and openly. The reason being because a lot of reasons. I don't know like why, why, why crypto founders like really not don't go ahead and talk about their teams. But I want to take this opportunity and since it's a proof of builders, which also involves you and me, everyone whosoever is contributing in whatever way it is possible, for you, when you started building the team, right, what are the things you have looked into first? That is the combination of the question. How is your team doing now? Like how you build that relationship because crypto is 24 into 7. Do you guys really work 24 into 7? That is second. It's a combination of questions. So sorry for asking that in the last moment. 
The third is if somebody wants to come into the Web3, why they should join Web3 now? And this is the final question. Uh, I think uh, for every, every project, you know, team team is everything, right? Like team is that uh, kind of make things happen. And uh, every founder should spend like a lot of time in hiring. Like that that's how we do it. Like uh, with us as well, like building my economy team, you know, like we do have multiple rounds, you know, just not only like, let's say like, of course, if you're hiring for a tech role, you know, you just don't only look for like, you know, whether the guy knows, you know, like React or the guy knows like Node.js or, or like all the technical skills, but also like, you know, you should, you know, like vibe with that person, you know, you should vibe with the team member because, you know, you'll be spending more than half of your day or in fact, like sometimes the entire day, you know, with, 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 with someone that if you don't like that person, probably you won't be able to work together. So that becomes very important. I think more than just the technical or core, you know, work skills, uh, we value culture aspect also a lot. And I think that is where a lot of founders should spend their time. Uh, do do like, you know, do, don't like rush in hiring. Like a uh, uh, lot of times, you know, uh, as you mentioned, right, tourists or people come in, with wrong intentions uh, and then they, you know, like uh, try to like, you know, uh, uh, shop around here and there, or they like to receive in companies, right? Like there are many team members in general that kind of hop companies every, every two months or something. So invest a lot of time in hiring. Uh, and uh, first thing is uh, do set up the right culture. I mean, if, if that's not set up, probably like if any person, even if it's good or bad, will, won't be like up for success within the company. So yeah, I think that is, I'll say like how a team, how we at Biconomy kind of look at team. And uh, so far we are like a team of, you know, of 40 people. Uh, initially, you know, like when we started, uh, it was very messy, right? Like it was just a starting phase. You know, we, we didn't have salary to pay people, but you know, they were very much in for the technology and they also wanted to do something in the space. Uh, uh, so things become chaotic, like in the initial phase, but when at, at a certain, you know, like uh, head count, you need to also add structures, you know, so you all always have to remember that, uh, you know, what got you in the first place probably won't get you in the next phase. So uh, that's how we kind of doing it. Like first phase was like a bit chaotic, but it was very fast, get things done. But then you like, you know, like having more structures and making sure that, you know, people also have like a good sort of a balance. Um, we crypto 24 7 like you know we we i wouldn't say like we work 24 7 but you know there's no like uh hardships in terms of okay you you have to take uh you know off off on saturday or you have to come come on monday all these kind of things you know people have their own responsibilities if they take off on wednesday they can do it if they work on sundays that's totally fine so so that kind of a culture is there you know like where people kind of take ownership and you're not just micromanaging people you know like that kind of helps a lot in terms of Scaling also and also giving you the mind space that you want. I'm forgetting the last question. Like, what is the last question? So, last question was around like, what are the uh, the builders who are coming going to be joining uh, the Web3 space? Uh, what they should be like? I believe you have already covered, but what are the skill set they should be pursuing and carrying forward to become the part of the Web3? Firstly, I would say like I think the passion towards the space is very much needed. A lot of people do come here for money, or you know, hope for money that it can happen. Or it can just get created, uh, but they don't get into the culture of it. You know, like of course you might have seen like people from great web two companies in the space, six months on the line. You know, they they never fit themselves in. So you know, understanding and belief is, is also very important, right? Uh, there's like a lot of opportunities right now because we are at a, such a nascent nascent level, and uh, you know we're still gonna be seeing like multiple applications in every space. You know, like NFT, gaming, social. So uh, people who get it uh, should, I'll say, like, take like a crash course for two months before committing themselves in the space, uh, you know. Uh, and the best part is, like, there's so many hackathons happening on a regular basis, right? And there's so much open source development contribution happening. Like, you guys do it. We do it. Right? Like, let's say if any, anyone, like, in the normal Web2 space wants to enter crypto, best thing is, like, probably, like, take part in a hackathon, see, like, how the environment is, maybe hack something with the developers, be part in multiple hackathons and see like whether uh, you know uh, they're liking it or not and then kind of make a decision rather than just probably like you know getting the company and six months scratching their head like 
what, what is web3 or what, what is like a, a wallet or something so i think all these are like good practices for anyone who's entering the space i believe this is <laughs> this is one of the uh, great advices which builders should listen to i believe that is when i say i believe that i believe should also come once you join web3 so if you believe in web3 i believe you are going to wag me which is which is we all are going to make it uh, or else you are going to be ngmi so if you are listening this entire podcast you must be like, like yeah <laughs> <laughs> double gm double gm like uh, passing the functions value into it i i can i can relate it to multiple things but mm-hmm. this is what exactly is going to happen and uh, if you believe in it's the space is the entire web3 is yours if you don't then you will not able to see yourself here for the next in the most likely within 3 or 4 months you will be exhausted and you will be out or most likely in a one year so thank you so much aniket for adding these i believe the value which you have just given to the in the entire podcast and i personally believe i have learned a lot during this entire especially the scam part and the last part around the team one which i am also going to use into uh my team as well because we are also the early and we'll make sure like you use some of your expertise there as well so thank you so much for joining in and uh, we'll make sure you receive uh something from our side thank you so much thanks for having me thank you, thank you.